back here with another uh, member of the production of Golf Cart Steam is Mine. <laughs> blowing dust, blowing dust everywhere. <laughs> but I'm with uh, Darius, who's a member of the Golden Gate chapter, like basically almost everyone I've been to read so far. Exactly. So I guess, let's start off, how long have you been a member of the club? Uh, so I joined uh, CCA and GCCA at the same time, so right around 20... 13, 2014. All right, so maybe about five years. Yeah. So do you remember what was, what sort of helped you uh, make the decision to join the club? Getting this car? Getting the Z, getting the Z3 coupe, right? And then, and then of course I also joined the uh, ZSCCA. So right. uh, I love everything that the organization does for the enthusiasts. And so whether or not I was going to be able to do events, I kind of wanted to pay into it to kind of pay it forward. And right. if I was able to benefit from it, then so be it. So, do you think you've benefited from the membership? Oh, absolutely. Like, I just... Right. What it, a loaded question I had there, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the biggest thing, I mean, most recent that I was actually able to participate in uh, was the High Performance Driving event where I met you and uh, Bessie first right. time uh, back in uh, April of this yeah, year. Yeah, end of April. So, yep. those of you who don't know, we do two HPD events each year. One in the spring is Laguna yep. and one in, Nove I think, November 10th and 11th. Registration hasn't opened yet, but that's at Thunder Hill. Thunder Hill, right. Which is, I don't know, maybe an hour north of Sacramento, so yeah, it's a long hike. It is. But I have been myself, but I've heard nothing but great things about Thunder Hill. So if you're out there, set your alarms for the whenever registration opens, which probably should be pretty soon. Probably, Make yeah. sure you get in. Yeah. Because I'm taking, you had a blast out there, right? I did have a blast, but, you know, as much as I may want to go out to Thunder Hill, my thing is... I'm not trying to track my car, so I like I really want to preserve the integrity of it. So to me, okay, you know, Laguna Seca being able to do it that first time was really for me kind of like a one-off thing. But if I could have my druthers, I would probably get a 318 Ti and create like a track car. But being a family guy and working all the time, kind of okay. hard to do that. Yeah, it's an unfortunate thing. Family gets in the way of having fun sometimes, right? <laughs> well, I try not to say it like that, but, but you know, that's the truth. Time commitments. But basically, it's. You took us here to have a little fun with it, just to see what it could do on the track. And learn, and I had a great time. So it's like, well, now I need to get a sort of dedicated track-ish car. Yeah, sort of play with but, now I need, but now I need a bigger garage, then I need a trailer, then I need a truck to tow right. it, and so... Right, so it creates all, all sorts of problems. Yeah, you know, yeah. Un yeah. Un unnecessary conflict. All right, so why don't we take a walk around okay. your uh, beautiful clown shoe. If My clown shoe, yes. Which didn't actually sell very well when BMW released it. So you picked this up, used them? Um, I used. Used? Okay. Yeah, no, I picked it up used. Uh, I found it through a uh, coupe buyer guide. Um, and okay, is, that, is that like an online resource for? Online resource. They have the, yeah, they have the, they have the M coupe uh, buyer guide. So I found it. It was actually up in Seattle. It was the color I wanted. And uh, pretty much I just had some long conversations with the seller and right. uh, just a lot of pictures and pretty much bought it sight unseen and uh, convinced a buddy of mine to fly up on a Saturday morning on a 7.30 flight and pick the car up and, <laughs> Take we, driving back down. and we drove it back and it was 10 hours. Ouch. Yeah. So I'm guessing well worth it then? Oh yeah. Drive. Yeah. And it drives way better now than it did when I picked it up. Like the rear tires were probably had belts coming through and it was like, oh, wow. we're lucky we didn't have an accident on the way back. But yeah, a lot of done a lot of things to it since uh right, since anything, i got it i guess anything up front now that we're basically oh right so here. setting up in the front uh, uh rieger splitter yeah uh so yeah. this this to me has a nice uh bmw style like kind of reminds me of what was on the e36 m3 yeah. a little more pronounced but it definitely looks more like an oe option and that's what i really want yeah it looks pretty nice with it um the m contour wheels also e36 m3 oh okay and uh, look familiar yeah, uh, same offset, 41, and it's just but eight and a half in the rear, which is gives yeah. me a little bit of a wider, uh, pronounced uh, stance. Yeah, so if I recall, this is based on the E36 anyway, so it's yeah, it's it's lots based. of fits. Yeah, the point is, is I I'm I'm period correct. <laughs> and then and then in the front before I forget, so I put the Euro plate on because oh, there yeah. was there was some uh, stuff in the in the paint and in the front. So, so I'm like, so I cut, it hides it pretty well. It hides it pretty well, and then I'm like, what kind of plate would I put on? So I had to nerd out, and I had to choose the cook, which is the future. So when BMW first came up with these, that was how they were positioning it in the in the marketing. And so right. being the nerd that I am, I went with it. 
Right, and that's really weird. They market this thing as the future, and then it sat on either lots because yeah. no one wanted the future. Because no one, because no, no one was forward thinking. Yeah, picking. and fast forward, you know, twenty years. Now everyone wants one. Of course. Um. So what you're not seeing. All right, under, we're gonna open up the door here. So yeah. hold on. Yep. So on the inside, Ooh. pretty stock, uh, except that for pedals looking really pedal, nice. Pedal house pedals. Uh, I reinforced the dead pedal, so it's oh, not yeah. so squishy. A nice um, orange, like a like an orange copperish yeah. M logo. Yeah, awesome. Exactly. I got a flat bottom steering wheel. A yeah, uh, guy out nice. of Germany and with the tricolor stitch. Yeah. I made my own blue colored uh, tabs. Yeah, that looks uh, pretty put good. Put that in there for a little pop. Uh, weighted shift knob. Uh, changed the uh, shift boot and gear gator, a leather Z armrest and leather Z uh, door armrest, and beyond that, nothing really too much, too crazy on the inside. I did put a uh, a Bluetooth uh, module so it lets me yeah. leverage the ex uh, factory stereo uh, for phone calls and streaming music. Yeah, looks good. Also, yeah. also le leather Z uh, sunroof block I'm on the on the top. Get, get up that way. Yep. Uh, yep. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, the little side uh, things that everyone puts on. Yeah, it's protected a little bit, yep. hopefully. Yep. Uh, what we're also not seeing, I mean, nothing nothing here on the on the back other than the Coupe Cartel sticker, but uh, suspension by Bimmerbum. So, Co okay. Coney Sport Yellows over uh, with Eibach Springs. Wow. Perfect, I, you know, because I told Ed, I'm like, hey, I want this to look and feel like it was an M option yeah, uh, at, like at, the, at the time, because really I'm not trying to get stamps. I'm not trying to have a harsh ride. I'm not tracking it. It's I want to have it kind of like a daily, but I want it sporty and I want it lower. Yeah, you see negative camber in the rear. Yep. Yeah, and uh, of course a vanity plate. A vanity plate. Yeah, I wanted Zukunft. Someone had it. I tried all the other variations. Uh, couldn't guess find clown it. Shoe couldn't fit. You know, and clown shoe. <laughs> so I went with Coupe Z3. Uh, tinted windows. Um, beyond that, then. Uh, uh, Dynan strut bar underneath the hood and a okay. Dynan stage one tune. Wow, that's pretty uh, extensive here. It sort of looks it's like a stealth fighter here, so you don't know what you're coming up in the, in the rear view mirror or someone else. They won't know it's a modif highly modified. I wouldn't say it's highly here. modified. I mean, these to me it's more about the style and the and the driving characteristics. It's not a speedster. Yeah. To me, I I love it for the style. Like I mean, it looks fantastic though. I'm, it's like, what were they thinking 20 years ago, not picking these things up? I don't know, but uh, I, you know, it's awesome. I love this thing. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for sharing. I think one last question. Yes. What do you think is the best thing about the club? Just the enthusiast, the enthusiast community. It's like people getting together and sharing our passion, and that's what it's all about. Right. So we can have any car, but we can all get together and kind of geek out and talk about our cars, and it's, n it's no big thing. If someone from the outside came in, they'd probably be like, you guys are nuts, like my wife says. Yeah. And but you know when we get together, it's like, hey, we're we're enjoying it. We're like, this is like Christmas every day for us. Exactly. So I think that's a common theme throughout the interviews that I've asked. It's, you know, the, the cars sort of bring you in, but yeah, the people make you stay around for a long time. You're gonna make really good friends through the club. CCA and also the ZSCCA, which is like our our sub chapter, right? So right. Um, yeah, love it. Awesome. Oh, Darius, thank you for joining me. All right. All right. Thanks for the interview. All right.